Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest lecturer, Tiffany Black, to Franklin. Tiffany is an award-winning artist based in Indianapolis. Tiffany is known for her collaborative murals and community-based projects. Since 2003, she has been actively involved in creating large-scale works, having painted over 40 murals across eight states, many of which have been community-driven endeavors. Currently serving as a resident artist with Big Car Collaborative in Indianapolis and an adjunct professor of art at Arkansas Tech University and Ivy Tech, Tiffany is also a founding mem member of TLC Art Collective, a group dedicated to addressing environmental and social justice issues through art. Tiffany's recent endeavors exemplify her commitment to using art as a means of fostering community dialogue and social change. In September of 2021, she embarked on a poignant project at Camp Atterbury, Indiana, working with Afghan evacuees to create the mural August 15th, which is now part of a traveling exhibition throughout North America and which Franklin College was fortunate to host last spring. Tiffany's diverse artistic journey includes notable experiences in television and film industries in New York City, where she contributed her skills to movies such as High Fidelity, The Politician, and Manifest, among others. Furthermore, her academic background includes a Master's of Fine Arts in Community Arts from Maryland Institute College of Art, or MICA, where she was recognized with multiple community engagement grants for her in, um, innovative initiatives, including the establishment of Video Lab, which provides free workshops in video production and digital media to residents of East Baltimore. We are truly honored to have Tiffany Black with us today, and I'm certain that her insights and experiences will enrich our understanding of the transformative power of art in public and community contexts. Please join me in welcoming Tiffany Black to our meetings. Hi everyone, thanks Randy for that introduction. I'm so honored to be here tonight, thanks for joining us. And I'm honored to have been invited to Franklin College to serve as the sixth uh, Clues Visiting Artist funded by the Clues Foundation. I was asked to bring my approach and experience as a community artist and muralist to lead the creation of the artworks in progress in the Sky Bridge walkway um, out here to our left, a four part mural that we've decided to title the Spirit of Community. This project, true to the spirit of community based arts, which is my field, and true to the spirit that I've learned to be of Franklin College is very collaborative, is highly interdisciplinary between different departments of the school, which I'll share a little bit about um, in a little bit. So you won't just be hearing from me tonight, but you'll also be hearing from five amazing students who have contributed greatly to this project, starting with preparation meetings during the past fall semester and leading up until now. So we're really excited to share with you tonight about the background, the process, as well as the future of this mural series. Three of Franklin's history students will be presenting first, Josie Lyons, Max Johnson, and Jack Sells. They've been conducting in-depth research of the history of the college and oral interviews with notable alumni. So these very dedicated students generously shared their findings with me to help form the basis and organization of the content of these four murals. And I thank them deeply for that. Their work is supported by the Council of Independent Colleges, Humanities for the Public Good Initiative, and the Community Engaged Alliance Faculty Fellows Grant. And then we'll hear from art majors, Aaliyah Saris and Lola Reed. These were my interns for the project and put in many hours helping me run the project smoothly, brainstorming issues that inevitably come up with a project of this scale, uh, as well as exercising their skills in leadership. So Alia was our painting team captain and Lola led the marketing and community engagement teams. So first up, please help me give a warm welcome to Josie Lyons. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Tiffany, for that introduction. Um, so I'm Josie, this is Jack and Max, and we are uh, history uh, seniors here at Franklin College. Um, so we were involved in an internship over the past about year where we performed oral histories of notable alumni, and we were also in charge of creating a digital archive known as Haiku and online journey. And then all of that research that we were able to do culminated in the creation of the mural outside. So I'm gonna hand over to Jack. So like Josie said, the first big part of our internship was oral history interviews. Uh, we each had one narrator that we interviewed. I interviewed Judy Warren, who graduated in 1980 from Franklin College. Max interviewed Pastor Douglas W. Gray, who is a community member of Franklin and teaches at Franklin sometimes. And Robert Perry, who graduated in 1970, was interviewed by Joseph. So the first step in this oral history process was researching our narrator. We had to collect primary sources and secondary sources, and that helped form a narrative of their life that we created. From there, we turned that into interview questions, and then with the help of Dr. Clark Wilts, we interviewed our narrator either in the Center for Tech Innovation podcast studio or over Zoom if they didn't live in the area. Now, one of the big things that I took away from this as a history and journalism major was just the plethora of ways that you can tell a story, do storytelling um, through oral histories and through a uh, collection of artifacts and things along. I will be telling you about the haiku collection and kind of how that process went. So haiku, um, think of like in person, um, like an archive you go in, you have to sort through all the files. We basically made that all online. Um, and so some of that process is we would take, um, for instance, Arthur Henry Wilson, who was the first African-American graduate from Franklin College. Uh, he was a part of the uh, football team. And so we actually went through the yearbook and took the page of the roster and we had to digitally scan that and upload it to Haiku. Um, and the cool thing about Haiku is not just for the students, um, it's you can access it, uh, public can access it through the Hamilton Library. Um, and it's, it's really interesting. I mean, these are just some of the names and we have uh, many more. Um, the most interesting part I found uh, was the process of rediscovering uh, Joseph Bean. He was a poet here at Franklin College. Um, and I kind of just, me and Professor Mahoney, who was in charge of it, went through and we're like, who is this Joseph Bean? And we ended up finding a lot of stuff about him. Um, he has work in the New York Public Library, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cool because he's reflected on the mural um, as we'll see later. So with our project, we also collaborated with the Indiana Historical Society. Um, so on the Indiana Historical Society website, they have something called Destination Indiana, which is basically where people can submit online journeys for the public to view. Basically, if you want to find out more about a person or a school or a building or a town, um, there are parts of this nation, Indiana, where you can look at those. And we had the privilege of submitting an online journey about the history of Franklin College sports. Um, as you can see, uh, we have things listed all the way from when intercollegiate sports began in about the late 1900s or 1800s, um, all the way to 21st century sports and renovations. We also had um, the opportunity to go to the Indiana Historical Society uh, twice. This picture is me uh, scanning a photo. We, it was really cool. We got to see all the kind of equipment they have there. Like Max was saying, we have a small scanner that we use for like scanning the yearbooks to put into Haiku. But at the Indiana Historical Society, they have like a giant scanner that has a really good quality. You could fit like giant posters on there. So it was very eye-opening to see like what a large scale digitization project project looks like. And then, yeah, so it covered everything from the beginning of sports all the way to now with things like Riz Park beginning and um, the newly announced fitness center being renovated and we called the Elwood Fitness Center. And I just think the coolest part of the whole thing was 
kind of seeing Franklin College evolve throughout the years through photos. By looking through the archives, we discovered photos of like the fitness center or like the beginning of Spurlock or renovations of the fitness center. Um, so it was, just, it was just really interesting that kind of seeing Franklin College over the years. Okay, so now I'll hand it off to Lola and Aaliyah to talk about the arts part of the project. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Lola Reed, and I'm a senior art history major here. Um, to start, there are two major leadership roles in this, and I led the community engagement team. This team had three different sections, including a marketing team, event planning team, and a media manager team. So with this, you can see photos up here. There's a large screenshot of Instagram account, and that was led by the marketing team. They created social media posts, including some of these cool graphics you can see here, and also this flyer in the middle. Um, with that, the event planning team uh, called local organizations across Franklin to print off these flyers and hang them up. So if you saw them during the end of January, that's what they were. Um, they also facilitated the community paint day where we had over 60 community members join us helping paint the mural and giving back to the community a little bit. Um, with that, the event planning team also created some infographics that showed why we had these people and objects on this mural, um, what they meant to Franklin and how they are going to help push our legacy forward to the future. Um, and lastly, we had the media manager team. And with that, they documented the whole process with photos, videos, time lapses, which Aaliyah will introduce. Hi, my name is Aaliyah Saris. I'm a studio art senior. Um, for this internship, I was the lead painter over our group, which was assistant painters, color specialists, and material managers. Um, a big part of my role in this project was going over all the information that we got from the history students and kind of creating a design that like accurately represents the history of Franklin and the future that we want to move towards um, as a community. Um, this was a like great opportunity to experience being an active artist and what that means and what it's like to participate in collaborative art. And I'm very grateful for this experience. Um, now we're gonna watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Lonely Woods today. Hi, I'm Celeste, and I'm part of the color mixing team. How do you think this mural will affect the community of Franklin College? Uh, I think these murals will work to creatively display Franklin's uh, care back. Just really cool. Thank you so much. <laughs>
I love that video that you all made. I see marketing team back there. <laughs> it was so good. Such a good recap. Thanks for sharing um, to each of these amazing students. Um, I see most of my class here, and thank you so much to the five students who just presented, um, contributing your amazing and very unique skills and insights to the development of these murals. Um, this has really been a huge group effort in a lot of ways, and many individuals have worked together to make it happen. So um, the 21 students who are enrolled in the actual immersive class, here's some of them here working on the murals behind me. Um, let's see if I can get this over. There we go. Um, I like to think we were creating shared memories within the class as well as in partnership with the larger communities that we were working with. Um, if you think about the larger scope of this project, even down to the alumni um, that the history students mentioned that they have interviewed and captured these oral histories with them. Like what an amazing project and a, an amazing way to capture the legacy of Franklin College in a very different way, as opposed to these visual murals and thinking about visual storytelling, right? Um, so we're talking about not just past memories, not just the historical murals, but, but also as Aaliyah alluded to, we're also talking about creating future visions of um, shared visions of a future and what that could look like for Franklin College. And that was also very much a part of this process. So I'd like to thank my students. They worked diligently for four days a week for three weeks in the coldest, January that I think that we've had ever. Here they are working in Margot Theater um, over in JFCA. And I want to thank you for all of your creative, mental, and physical efforts that you brought to this project. Um, it's it, We got to an amazing place. We didn't quite finish yet, but we are still going strong. And as we finish the final details, I hope that everyone will come visit us in the Skybridge walkway, come say hi, um, and you can be involved with, um, you know, learning about those final details and touches that we're adding along the way. I'd also like to thank Jessica Mahoney, the Director of Library Services, and Randy Fry of the Art Department for really going above and beyond and um, ensuring the success of this project and expanding its scope in very fruitful ways. Thanks also to Meredith Clark, Clark Wiltz of the History Department and Betsy Schmidt for bringing your expertise to committee meetings. All of these faculty members visited our class to share with students the context and the vision and the background of this project before we got to work, which was very meaningful. Here they are uh, visiting our class and presenting. The new director of the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, Marlisha Marcellin, also visited our class and provided really valuable insights as we designed the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Panel, which is the third one as you're walking towards the library. Um, this was actually Aaliyah and Lola's idea to invite her in on the process, which was genius. Um, she helped us just to make sure that all of the panels were inclusive and representative of the college's past and present student bodies. I also want to thank um, Dean Flora and President Prather. As we look at the wall here, this was before, so this was um, January 2nd, the first day of our class, to the current state now. Um, thank you to Dean Flora and President Fraser for your valuable contributions to the content and subject matter. I have to shout out Christine Morris for all of her administrative support um, and also to the facilities team for doing such an amazing job, especially Mark Wright installing these murals. And they added these really cool um, frames around each one that are now metallic gold, which is just such a nice touch. Um, we also have a couple students who helped. You see the background of each one are now this beautiful Franklin College dark rich blue. Um, Max and Cairo helped to paint those. They look so good. Um, so before I go into specifics about the, pro the process and the mural itself, I thought it might be helpful to share a little bit about my background as a muralist. 
Um, I'm a public artist, as Randy mentioned in my intro. I'm mostly a painter. I create large scale murals primarily. I do a lot of public works, including this mural was in Baltimore. This was a 120 foot long uh, painted mural of native birds of Maryland. And as a community artist, I tend to make everything collaborative and engaging in some way. So with this one, all along the bottom of the entire 120 feet of this mural, I made it into a paint by number and invited everyone to help me fill in all the base coat colors. So we had people of all ages, um, even younger than this little girl here, and we had so much fun. That was the summer of 2022, I believe. Um, another project, I did go to Hanover College, and that's where I got my start. I know, but if you ever do go down there, I don't know, for a sporting event or something, you might go to Madison, which is a cute little historic town, and you might go to uh, Shipley's Tavern, where I did this three-story mural right after I graduated. Um, and that's when I kind of figured out how to do this, kind of just on my own. Here's a little close-up of one of the historic vignettes. It was also a historic mural. And this was for the Indiana Economic Development Corporation downtown. This is installed in their offices now. Um, here's the, the whole piece. They made postcards and stickers out of it. And yes, again, it was community engaged, quote unquote. Um, so also paint by number. Um, my husband, who's here, Kahar, helped me take this to New York City, where the Indiana Economic Development Corporation sponsored an innovation festival. We had thousands of people helping to fill in all of these colors. It was amazing. We saw Priyanka Chopra and Jennifer Garner, which was <laughs> really cool. But they didn't paint on it, unfortunately. And I designed, too. This is a terrazzo floor that I designed for the Little Rock Airport. Um, so it's all poured terrazzo. It's a 90-foot floor if you ever fly through Little Rock which we don't commonly do from Indianapolis, but um, it's all, it represents the native flora and fauna of Arkansas, the natural state. Randy also mentioned um, this project that I led at uh, Camp Atterbury in Edinburgh in 2021. So this was exhibited here at Franklin College last spring that you might have seen. This was in partnership with the Religious Studies Department. Um, and August 15 is when the Taliban took over Afghanistan. So we created a collaborative mural with evacuees commemorating that day. And through this project, they were able to tell their story, their experience of coming here. Here are some Franklin College students interacting with it. Um, this was also a joint exhibition with my husband, Kahar, whose paintings you see along that side, along with the 20 foot long mural. Those are his works. So that is me. And as you can see, community engagement and collaboration have always been a vital part of my artistic process. And through this spirit of community process, I've really been excited also to explore the connections of collaborative approaches and interdisciplinary approaches being here in an academic setting. So I recently came across this abstract on guiding undergrad education in interdisciplinary science and STEM. So this was published in 2019 for a journal serving mainly biology instructors. Um, but I found it to serve as a nice model for this discussion um, of our approach as well to this collaboration. So their model, which you can see here, is based on research that suggests students need multiple ways of knowing to address interdisciplinary understanding, including disciplinary grounding, the one at the top left here, I'll just move around, 
which they refer to as the basic understanding of contributing disciplines, as well as advancement through integration, which they refer to as an understanding of how those disciplines integrate to advance problem solving toward the common goal, for example, a forced four-part historical mural telling the whole story of a college. <laughs> this was also described as capacity to use knowledge flexibly. All four criteria outlined here, including different research methods and collaboration across disciplines, are interrelated and connected by a concept that they call disciplinary humility, which is based on inclusivity and respect for other schools of thought. The researchers found that the students who practiced collaborations between STEM and non-STEM disciplines, like social sciences and humanities, for example, in relation to real world issues, were able to understand how their fields constantly interface with society, like policy, economics, and community relations. So they found that they were generally more receptive to new ideas, more sensitive to ethical issues because they're being exposed to all of these different perspectives. They integrated disciplinary insights more holistically. They exhibited more humility and they moved beyond tolerance to a celebration of diversity. So not just tolerating it, but actually celebrating it and seeing its value. And lastly, an important goal of interdisciplinary education is to provide advancement beyond just the scope of one's own discipline. So really seeing that we're limited in our individual silos and we kind of need each other, um, which is really at the heart of community arts and what we're trying to do here. So our interdisciplinary approach with this project mainly involves the efforts of these different departments and organizations. Um, that other people have presented on already tonight. We have the History Department, the Library Archives, um, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. And this approach carried the planning stages of this project all the way to January 2nd, when our three-week immersive class began. Um, here's a group photo of our students who were enrolled uh, at the community engagement session that we hosted. So most of them are, are art majors. I think some might have been undecided. And through this project, we not only focused on our collaborative efforts with different departments of the school, but each student also took on a role that was essential to the project, to making it a success, a job that they were responsible for that contributed to our common goal in different and direct ways. So Lola already shared a little bit about that, about this with us, um, and but I'll give it a brief overview. So the class was split into two different teams. Our first team was the painting team, and the second was community engagement. So here's some of the roles and responsibilities that the painting team had. This was led by Aaliyah. And each student could opt in for whatever role they wanted to take on. So I didn't assign them, but uh, they had to think about what are their own strengths and what they would also enjoy doing. And um, that could have been the lead painter, assistant painter, our color specialists. They really had a big job. Our color specialists um, were in charge of mixing the entire color palette in large batches and leading the preparation of all of these murals it's a giant paint by number um it was a big job everyone had big jobs it was a lot of work here is um Aaliyah also mentioned that we went through a lot of the design process together three weeks is very fast for a, pro a project like this so there was a lot of legwork ahead of time and there's some after as well but the heart of it really happened during those three weeks so here we're thinking through the DEIA panel, what to include, where to put it, what, what makes sense design-wise, aesthetically. Um, here are some students transferring the designs. And a little video. 
We use projectors to transfer everything. Yeah. That was in the Margot Theater. And then here you can see how detailed the paint by number was. Um, very detailed. <laughs> Lots of numbers. Well, it was only 22 numbers, but the areas were so tiny. <laughs> and um, more work with the projector over here. So everything was prepared for that community painting day, which was on January 12th. <laughs> and um, so everybody, all the visitors, even if they're not quote unquote artists, um, had a very clear way that they could contribute. You pick up uh, whatever number the blue is and you find an appropriate paintbrush and, and fill that in. And I think people had a really good time. We had some people who stayed for the entire four hours of the event and the weather was horrible that day. Um, we had a really good turnout considering there was a, I think it was a snowstorm that day. Our color specialists, here's the color palette that they developed. And you can see them over here, um, mixing all those colors in large batches, putting them in bottles. They labeled all the colors so that we had a good idea of, you know, colors that might've been kind of similar, keeping those organized. And then we had our community engagement team. And here were some of the roles um, that those students had. Uh, Lola led this team. So these were also very important roles. You think of a mural project that everyone would be painting. Well, not necessarily. There's a lot of other tasks that need to be done. So as we opened up this project to the larger Franklin communities, including the campus and the town of Franklin, um, our event planners coordinated the community painting session, they planned it, and we had smaller teams of marketing and media managers that led publicity, outreach, through social media posting, they made flyers, they went out and distributed those in the snow and freezing cold, um, and they documented our process with photos and videos. One of our students, Tristan, made this video for our Instagram account as well as the logo, turned out pretty cool. They also spoke to the press. We had a reporter come in from the Daily Journal. <laughs> yep, <laughs> real world experience. And um, here are some shots from our community painting day. I think it was somewhere between 60 and 80 visitors who came and um, filled in colors. We have little aprons for everybody. I want to hear what she got in trouble as a teacher. <laughs> I did not notice that before. <laughs> Actually, Dad, do you remember what she said? That was my dad in the video. <laughs> He's got all the secrets. <laughs> so as people came in, um, the students had everything set up and organized. Here's Emma helping my dad get some paint. Um, all the colors were organized by number, and Celeste made these instructions to let people know. Yes, I'm giving you all little shout outs. Um, just in case there were questions or confusion, um, just to be extra inviting to people who wanted to be involved but might have felt a little bit apprehensive. But we have people of all ages. Um, this little girl on the right, she just went for it. It was great. And we filled in a lot of color that day. Our community engagement team also created this welcome table in JFCA for people who were coming in. So they displayed the posters that the class put together. Um, there were also these really nicely designed posters 
you can see at the top panel one tradition and athletics um, that they use their graphic design skills to let people know this is the information that's included here and here's kind of how we arrived at these decisions. So for example, the DEIA panel, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Um, here's kind of some of the progression of how that brainstorming session kind of exploded once we started cutting things up and moving them around, deciding uh, what organizations to include, which alumni, which people. Um, it's Yolanda's incredible spirit that we will never forget. Boundless joy, relentless positivity, non-stop encouragement. Today I'm coming to you with the word. That's what you want. Yolanda asked you, may everyone believe the power of goodness and kindness. Today, I'm bringing the noise, videos on social media, and everything she did. I don't even see it. Born in 1968, the New York City native and some of the college graduate joined our team in 1997 as a sales assistant. Over the 26 years, she rose to be director of sales fulfillment and special projects, a title that could never capture what she did for all of us and NBC Universal. Yolanda's passion for diversity, equity, and inclusion issues on full display with her leadership in NBC Universal's Black Employee Network. Beginning in 2016, she served as a station leader and then a global advisor while becoming a founding member of WNBC's Diversity Advisory Council. Challenging us to be better for the week and smile. So don't be afraid to shine brightly and let the rest of the world know that no Latin puts baby in the corner. Yo, that's we culture was also a driving force behind projects including our Wakanda Center tree lighting productions and WNBC's Health Expo at UMass. Outside of work, she was a member of the Franklin College Board of Trustees in her church and incredibly close with her family. To Yolanda, life was a joyful celebration, a journey that we are all on together. So that's Yolanda Askew, who's being featured in the DEIA panel, um, who just passed away last year. Um, so we're giving her a place of honor uh, among many other notable alumni. And she was so beloved by her communities, as you can tell. And um, it's so nice to be able to honor people like this in this mural. So that's Yolanda Askew. It's Yolanda's incredible. There we go. Who um, will be going at the top of this panel. So this is a design created by our student Claire uh, for the DEIA panel that we then digitized with the same motif that's carried through all four of the panels. So showing you a little bit of a progression. Um, this is the current state of that particular panel. Yolanda will go up at the top in the center, surrounded by four portraits of others that I'll, I'll share with about them as well. You can also see in a lot of these, um, the actual scenes, all the figures, the buildings are pulled from uh, actual photographs of the campus. So this is a photograph of the campus um, that was used to inspire the way that we designed the background of this particular panel. There's also a lot of influence of the stained glass on campus in the chapel as well as in Old Main. So each panel has this stone archway that's inspired by the architecture. Each one has a stone archway like this. And at the top are the stained glass motifs that are seen here on campus. So here's a full list of the figures, the portraits that will be in the DEIA panel. So again, there's going to be 32 
total portraits. Um, and another student, Garrett Fogel, is actually leading the creation of all of those amazing portraits. If you haven't seen them close up, they look really excellent. Um, Arthur Henry Wilson, I think Jack mentioned, or Max mentioned that he was um, the class of 1902, I believe, and was the first black student to graduate from Franklin College to be admitted and to graduate. Um, Joseph Bean was also mentioned. We also wanted to honor current students who are leaders in their class and who are doing amazing work. Um, so one student who's going to be featured in a portrait is um, Amy Garrido Portillo, who is, I think, the second from the left here, who is an op officer of the Latinx uh, Student Association. She's the president. Then we have the traditions panel. This one's actually the first one as you go out into the hallway. This features a lot of current past traditions, some that haven't been around for so long and some that aren't actually around anymore. Um, but just going through the archives and thinking about different um, pieces of Franklin College history and how to show that. So we have the kite festival, the painting of the Ben Franklin statue, the bed races that a lot of people seem to remember, um, Greek life, the Grizzly Grand Prix. It was really fun to go through all those historical archives and like dig through it and see, you know, how to represent as much as we could. The traditions panel will mostly have portraits of past presidents, also some past um, trustees like um, Catherine Wright Burke's picture here. We have the Innovation and Education panel. That's the third one. I think DEIA is the second, and this is the third. I misspoke earlier. So this one is, um, the concept is based on the rebuilding of Old Main. So we have the blueprints of Old Main kind of off in the background of the sky and this phrase, design the future. So um, I thought it was really interesting to think about rebuilding. Um, I know there's this, a history of um, kind of some destruction and rebuilding with Old Main. And um, here's uh, President Martin giving his speech about the Phoenix Rises. So thinking about that concept of rebuilding and making blueprints and that idea of resiliency and what's required to do that is such a powerful metaphor. Um, so that's incorporated in the innovation and education panel. Here's some of the people that we're honoring. We have Robert Wise who directed Sound of Music. Um, Thomasine Allen, whose bust is here, it, it's in the library, if you haven't seen it in the library. This is what it looks like, but go see it in person. As well as um, another faculty member who passed away recently, Carol McKinney of the Education Department. So her portrait will be going in this panel. Within the scene of the education panel, like the aerial view of campus, we're also acknowledging some other important figures um, like those listed here. Of course, it's not comprehensive to all the people that we would have wanted to include in honor, um, but we'll just have to keep adding more panels in the future so we can get everybody in there. <laughs> just continue it on into the library. <laughs> A lot of motifs are also pulled from past yearbooks. So this was a 1902 yearbook. Um, this is where we got the photos of Arthur Henry Wilson. And um, I loved the lettering of this. We pulled this out. This one is above the education panel. So those are all gonna be metallic gold. And more photographs. So not just historic photographs, but also current, modern photographs. Um, this one is recreated also in the education panel. And you can see Lola working on that one to the right, uh, the students sitting on the wall there. 
And lastly, we have the athletics panel, lastly, but not least. Um, I didn't know that Franklin College has such a rich history of sports and athletics. It's really impressive. Um, this is some of the progression of our athletics panel featuring all of the different athletics departments um, and especially the, the Wonder Five here in the front, the infamous basketball team. Um, here is um, some of our students were working on, you know, adjustments, edits, adding colors, figuring out what goes where. So part of that background, that process. Some of the portraits. Um, Judy Warren was mentioned earlier, and here's um, the progression of her portrait so far on the mural. And simultaneously, um, I just completed a project for NBA All-Stars that also features Judy Warren. So it's been so fun to really learn about her and to honor her in this way. Um, I didn't know about her before I have these two public art projects at one time that both feature Judy Warren. And she's such a humble person that, you know, you just wouldn't know that she's such a star and such a trailblazer. This was my basketball, um, this is for the Indy Arts Council that partnered with Pacers Entertainment and NBA All-Star. And they played, they had 24 artists, 24 sculpted basketballs that are six feet in diameter. They were placed all around Indy for the duration of the tournament. <laughs> So this is actually Judy's family. She is around. She was off doing an interview somewhere. I really want her picture of it too. But this is her son and her grandkids um, with her basketball. They were so excited. And my parents also went with the big all-star sign. It was so cool. Some more history of Franklin athletics. There's so much that we could have included and that we want to include. Um, you know, from Anna Murdoch getting all American honors in track and field in 2015, so amazing, all the way back to the Franklin Wonder Five, who were also honored at the NBA All-Star Tournament. Um, you know, there's just so much material to draw from and so much history that we just eventually had to find a place, you know, to put a cap on it, even though we want to include everything. But Randy Fry, the chair of the art department, has shared some beautiful visions for future graphic design classes to add augmented reality to these murals. So possibly, um, I think it's still in the works, but possibly creating something like an app that you would hold in front of the murals that would give you more context, more background about the stories, about the history, and maybe even overlaying different visuals to help these murals evolve with time, just as, you know, just as the school is evolving over time. So we're really excited to see what Randy's classes have in store for the future of these murals. And I also hope that you'll check in with us in the walkway as we finish up, come by and say hello. They've come a long way since the beginning of January. Um, here's the students priming the panels on day one. And then look how far we've come. Um, here's one of our, I like this, there's like so much happening in this one. And I just am so beyond grateful to everybody who's contributed to this project. It's really been a group effort um, from faculty and students to community members, everybody. This could not have happened without you and it could not continue to happen without you. So thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to see where we end up with this spirit of community project. Thank you, everyone.